you know, there's some serious subjects here uh, in the video uh, online world. Uh, uh, various, um, let's see, what did my thing say? Oh yeah, will it make TV redundant? Or will, <laughs> you know what, yeah, I, you guys don't know this, sometimes you write a joke and then you look back and you're like, I don't get it anymore. Okay, uh, will online make TV redundant or will it go the way of a Times Square peep show? Is the mic, is the mic on? Is the mic on? <laughs> and to talk about this and moderate a debate about this very subject, please welcome Tim Shea. Hi everybody, um, my name is Tim Shea, I'm one of the co-founders of Next New Networks and uh, I'm here to moderate a little debate tonight. Um, basically my company is a company that's uh, one of the first media companies to scale on the internet. We're uh, about to pass a billion views this month. Uh, you might know us as the company behind Obama Girl, Barely Political, Indie Mogul, Threadbanger, The Key of Awesome, lots more. Uh, we also have created a great hit branded series with brands like American Express, Samsung, and uh, lots more. Um, but the question that's near and dear to my heart and probably a lot of yours here is, you know, how are we going to create a business of scale to rival that of traditional media? Um, what is really the future of online video? And so here with me I've got two very distinguished guests with uh, opinions on the matter. We'll, we'll take our seats. Um, we've got Brian Sugar um, from Sugar Inc., which is a leading women's international lifestyle brand and, uh, and uh, distribution network of properties. And we've got uh, Matt Weisshoff from um, Broadband Enterprises, which is uh, probably the leading video network in the world right now. So um, we're going to let them both talk. I'll, I'll sort of start things off, and uh, and we'll see where this goes. And we're good under a minute. There we go. So um, first question: um, What I'd like what I'd like to do is um, sort of pose a question to both of you. Um, we'll start maybe with with you. Um, and the question is really. What do you see as a really scalable business in, in video? Can online video be a scalable business? And uh, you know, what's your approach to making that, that happen? I'll start with you. Sure. sure. Uh, well, first of all, I want to say we're proud to be the distributor for Jen and Barb Mom Life, the new Webby award-winning reality and talk series. So thrilled about that. <clears throat> um, scale. I mean, that's, that's what we set off to do, and the early visions was not unlike King World. If you're familiar with uh, Roger and Michael King's uh, syndication company, you know, they, they set off uh, to set up a syndication model in television, and uh, what, what they had to brought to television before they, they made the phenomenon that is Oprah Winfrey, they were distributing shows like Little Rascals. You might not know that, but ultimately they built a model on the back of some of those programs that um, weren't nearly as popular. Uh, they, they, they formed and, and strengthened that syndication model and obviously uh, the, the net results was creating some of the biggest personalities in the world. Uh, we have done that, we've achieved that uh, in online video and so when we sit alongside the major broadcast networks today and the major television studios, we can talk about some of the early successes that we're having bringing programs to scale. Great. Um, so, Brian, how does online video work in your business, and, and how are you bringing it to scale and, and uh, profitability? Sure. Thank you. Um, so, I'm, I'm Brian Sugar, CEO of, of Sugar Inc., and we have a, a bunch of different uh, businesses uh, that really run off our uh, editorial business. So, uh, my wife started blogging uh, when she was a media planner, uh, and she created Pop Sugar, and from that, we launched about a dozen sugar sites, one for fashion, one for beauty, one for home, et cetera, and we have about, um, about 16 sites that are up and running. Um, it was clear that we quickly had to add video to that, so we now, uh, uh, we, we just started doing video about nine months ago. Uh, we do 150 episodes a month across four channels, um, and that's doing really well. But the problem that we have is the business model of advertising as a small media company really doesn't scale. You don't become a multi-billion dollar company like traditional media companies. So we took a real hard look at what we had and the assets that we had and how do we actually uh, innovate on, on the business model. Um, so we looked at our audience, which is about 16 million monthly uniques, and we said, wow, this is a really large audience. And we said, who out there can actually afford to buy banner ads and pre-roll on our sites and what kind of business are they in that they could do that because there's no way I would ever buy 
uh, banner ads or video ads on other sites to drive traffic to my own because I can't make that much money on it. So uh, we looked at a, a variety of different models and w one thing we landed on was commerce. So we bought a company a couple of years ago called ShopStyle which is basically Google for fashion and we essentially want to own the link economy to all fashion and beauty retailers and get a cut of all the traffic that is actually flowing from whether Fab Sugar is talking about it or Bella or Fashionology or Pop Sugar. Every one of those links that gets off to the retailer we actually can monetize and we monetize it really, really well. Um, other business models that we've gotten into um, and these are all around just crazy innovations that have happened over the past 18 months or 24 years and there's been no innovation on the advertising side but all these other things are happening. Uh, so uh, one of the things we did was we, we bought a company uh, yesterday it was announced a company called Fresh Guide so that we can get into the local city guide and exclusive offer market. So again th the idea as a media company for us is you build an insanely addictive audience that comes to consume your media but you don't, you don't make the tons of money off of the advertising. The advertising essentially pays for the creation of that content. Then you start building serious businesses on top of that, whether it be commerce or local offers. The next thing that we're launching uh, next month is a social game which is called Pop Sugar's Retail Therapy which will be able to buy all these virtual goods from all the brands that work with us through ShopStyle, whether it be Topshop or Gap, Banana Republic, etc. What we've learned is with 16 million uniques and almost 200 million page views a month and growing pretty rapidly, uh, it, we just can't grow a multi hundred million dollar business from display advertising alone. We look at audience creation and advertising as a marketing line item expense to all the other super efficient business models that we do. To put it in perspective, for every thousand pages that we serve, for whether it be video or content, we can make about $15. For shop style we make about $65. So there's a huge difference. So if I had a thousand pages I would rather send them over to shop style than to pop sugar because of the amount of money that we can make from that. Now pop sugar and all the other sites that we have is the engine that makes everything else work because if we look at all of our competitors in the other places they have to spend a buttload of money buying advertising on sites like mine so they can drive it to their commerce sites or their local offer sites or uh, etc. So for us the big innovation around advertising is use advertising to pay for the content creation and then with that audience create much bigger and more innovative business models. So, so Matt he's basically saying you can't build a billion dollar business on advertising alone and you know what do you think of that and the media companies that you're working with do you think they can get up to scale by working with video networks like yours? I, I think there's going to be a lot of ways in which to, to see success and I'm, I'm sure that Brian uh, is, is going to you know, build what you're seeking to build uh, in that way. I think the good news for this room is uh, advertising is going to get us where we want to go. And, and if you think about what brought us here today, uh, Digitas is the means to which we're, we're sitting here together today and, and they're the ones who bring the dough. So thank you very much Digitas for getting us together and really moving the conversation along. <clears throat> but you know what, what I what I get excited about is you know when I when I spend my time with you know uh, Gary Grunberg and Mark Stewart and, and the, the folks at Kraft who are looking at this moment in time during the upfront season and asking us what we can do to really move the needle in video and they're not just looking at TV as, as TV they're looking at TV as video they want to see and figure out how to make that model work across all content. And that I think is the spirit of this, uh, of this day and the good news is you know folks like Kraft and folks like the, the great clients that are sitting here are, have a ton of energy to do it. I think so, a multi-billion dollar business is in front of us. Right. Well but, but from my point of view as a producer right I, I hear what Brian's saying and I've got, I've got a 50 million page views a month on, on our video network and, and he's telling me I can make $65 per thousand views um, by, by doing e-commerce and, and building a commerce engine and you know we know the CPMs right now on online video aren't that high. So how are we going to get there? How are we going to make, first off do you think that's reasonable what he's saying or, or do you think there's a way that we can get the prices up in a way that we can really create great online video content that rivals that of, of television. Yeah, I, I mean we're, we're doing a lot of heavy lifting. Uh, the last couple of years as we've tipped into recession, you know, I think we've all had to kind of figure out some of the things that are less sexy 
the systems, the plumbing, if you will. Uh, you know, one of the things that TV enjoys that we have not enjoyed is a posting, a measurement system, a, co a consistent metric. It's hard for the greatest talent and producers in Hollywood to put real investment in this, in this space when they really don't know what the metrics of success are. When you put a show on TV, you know the next morning if it was successful or not. These are the things that we have to confront. I know we're addressing and a lot of advancements have been made, but once we overcome some of those hurdles, and we are, uh, it's going to be great for all of us. Um, so I, I totally agree with all that, and I think, I think it's been a lot of hard work on the advertising side, and, and just the biggest innovation we have are the text links on the side of Google. And um, I'm looking forward to the next big, you know, whatever the new shiny object's going to be for ad planners, whether it's, you know, uh, location, Twitter, video, but it just seems like every six months we're coming back to media planners like, no, 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 this is the new thing that we, we need to, to advertise on. I think the interesting thing for us is the relation that we have is one of the greatest content companies on earth, in, in my eyes, is Disney. And if you actually look at where Disney makes a lot of their money, uh, they use their content engine, their Mickey Mouse, their now Marvel, all their different content that they create and the majority of the money that they make is whether from theme parks or merchandising or books or et cetera. It's extending the content brand into real money making environments. I think the advertising can be used to run a nice profitable business so the content can make it on its own, but to be Disney sized from a media perspective or any of the other great companies, you start to see that they have these other diversifications of revenue streams and they use the audience that they've created as their advantage to their other competitors. So when, uh, when either of you are working with an advertiser, I'll, I'll let you start and maybe you go in. When they're looking, what do you think that an advertiser should be looking to get when they're advertising with your network or working with you on a video project or, or working with you? Are they, should they be thinking about ROI and directly driving to sales or is there still a place for brand awareness and brand advertising online? So I, I think that there's, um, there's kind of three different classes of advertisers. I think there's the, the intrusion-based advertisers. They're kind of entertainment companies. Apple, Sony, et cetera, they don't really care about our brands. They just kind of want to have the, the ad push our content out of the way and they want to show off their ads and we do really, you know, really well with them. I think the, the second group of advertisers are the, the packaged goods guys, a lot of the people out of, out of Chicago. I think they, they tend to want to be integrated into the community. They want to do sponsored by and they want to do free samples and the whole host of stuff that we do there and we do really well with that. I think both of those classes of advertisers can do the brand advertising and, and we are doing that. The third advertiser, which is kind of the hardest one, the one that spends a ton of money in, in magazines right now are, you know, the fashion brands and the retailers. And they are so ROI focused. They're like, if we're going to spend $15, we better get that equivalent in whatever we did on the, uh, on the other side. So I think a good portion of it will be brand advertisers, but I think there are some, some, you know, analytical people at these advertisers that understand how much it costs to buy SEM on Google and all of that. And, and it, it's a shame that we make it so damn measurable because they know exactly what happens all the time. Where it's like, you ask somebody TV, hey, how'd your TV commercial go? Oh, I, th I think it looked great. Yeah, it was good. But it's what, like, what, hey, you ran this campaign on you know, Pop Sugar. It's like, well, it only got a 0.032% click-through rate. And it's like, we have the worst click-through rates in the industry because I think our content is really good. I don't think people so, want to... So, man, what, do you think by measuring so much, we're ruining some of the magic of advertising? I, 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 I think, and I, I'm going to second you on that, Brian, we, sometimes we in this industry could be a little too cute, a little too smart for ourselves. Uh, for, for ourselves. And, and I, I think if we can get a little bit away from that, um, getting too myopic, uh, what I take uh, encouragement from were some of the conversations we had last night and, uh, with Jen and Barb and some of the clientele here. We're listening from a content perspective, we're listening to your marketing objectives. You know, show me a broadcast network that's sitting down with your brand to understand what your true marketing objectives are. That is not happening. The next, the next generation of content, uh, the formation of the content, all the energy in this room is going to come from content producers like the ones you're sitting alongside right now, listening to what your objectives are and making that come true in the programming. That, that is exactly where this is all heading, and that is brand dollars. Okay, we got 90 seconds left, so I'm going to ask you guys just one quick question. Maybe you can try to answer as quickly as possible. Um, to everybody in the room that's out here, how much of their TV budget should they shift to online video? 10%. Over how long? 
That's what we should be, that's our goal, that should be our goal today. For what, next year, next 10 years? For 20, the, this, this up front going forward, 10%. 10%. What do you think? So I think that'd be great. I think $12 billion moving into video online advertising would be incredible. Uh, so I'd like that too. Okay, great. So you, you wanted a multi-billion dollar business, Brian. You guys heard it here first. That's what's going to make it happen. And, and we're hoping you guys will all come talk to us and, and uh, we'll try to make it work for you. And uh, so closing statements. We got a little more time. Anything else you, the, new, the room needs to know? No, I think, I think, you know, I think we all know and, and we can all make the case for why 10% we're, we're, we're due. It, it's our time. You know, we're coming off a couple of tough years. You know, TV has enjoyed a tremendous run. It's not over for them, but it's our time. This is our time, and I think, uh, I think if we could put the, the bar high and shoot for it, we have a, a, a lot of uh, running room to go. I'm looking forward to that. Brian, any closing remarks for the room? No, I think I spoke enough. All right, good. Well, then we're ahead of schedule. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. I thought, I was like, I heard closing statements. I thought there was going to be like a whole, you know, legal thing or 